we're going to chat about the flying carpet. It's a really cool innovation here from the clubhouse. I um, want to talk about um, how we lower it, how we raise it, how we keep uh, student staff and performers safe with operation of the flying carpet. The flying carpet's always going to be um, transported in the transport here position, so it will always be in the up position. You'll see the two green arrows align with transport here. We've kept that same model with the color coding, and I want to point out the straps that we use to keep the flying carpet from bouncing during transport. Um, you'd think it wouldn't bounce a whole lot, even though it weighs uh, 1,500 pounds, but um, there's quite a bit of motion in a moving van. Um, so to lower the flying carpet, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the straps, and you'll notice the green dots at the top and the bottom as a great check reference to make sure that that has been done. So we're gonna pull these green straps from all four corners. In grabbing the pendant, the up on the pendant is always the cord end. So it's oriented with the cord facing up. That will be your up button, that will be your down button. When we press the up button, what we're gonna hear is the power unit for the hydraulics turning on and actually creating hydraulic pressure to lift the flying carpet up. You'll see that the two green arrows will no longer be aligned, that we'll be lifting the green arrow closer to the red, the raise to here spot. Anytime you're going to lower the flying carpet, you wanna raise it a little bit so that we can then lower it. That allows you to turn the handle, which will retract the locking dogs that keep that flying carpet in place. So we're gonna press up, we're gonna watch as pressure builds and we're gonna see the two arrows misalign. Um, once I've lifted the flying carpet up off the locks on each four posts, I'm simply gonna rotate the handle 45 degrees. By rotating the handle 45 degrees, I'm withdrawing those springs and allowing us to travel past the locks. Once I've done that, I'm just gonna simply hit the down button. When we hit the down button, you won't hear the power unit come on because we're not actually using any hydraulic power to lower, we're just using gravity. But I have to get it up off the dogs to be able to allow that gravity to happen. So we're gonna go quickly up. You see that I've gone to the raise to here. I'm going to rotate that handle 45 degrees and you'll see it's now in that lower zone hash mark. And then I'm simply gonna press and hold the down button. And you'll hear how quiet it is. We heard one quick click from a valve moving. Now, something to consider when you're lowering the flying carpet, you of course wanna check and make sure that there's nothing underneath. No student, staff, performers, or equipment. Band-aids you can squish. <laughs> Once I've gone past that perch height mark, I can release the handle because I've gone past that last locking position. So I'm gonna come all the way down to the floor. And I'm gonna settle it in all four corners and I can take my thumb off the lower button. Now the, the flying carpet has been dropped to its um, loading position. I'm going to slide the two swing latches out of the way on the approach plate. And now I can roll all of my front ensemble equipment up onto the flying carpet. Now what's really cool in our architecture is I can load part of the flying carpet, raise it up to its transport here position, and then push some of that equipment up onto the nose deck. So you have an extra 11 feet of second floor space. So it gives you um, 37 feet of loadable floor space upstairs. To um, raise the flying carpet, we're just gonna uh, reverse that process. I'm going to latch the approach plate in place. I don't have to worry about that, that 45 degree handle um, and I'll explain why in just a second, but I'm just gonna press and hold the up button and I'm gonna go all the way up to the raise to here location. As the flying carpet is raising, 
one of the things that we'll hear incrementally is a clanging. Just like that, a click. Every time those locking spring-loaded latches cross one of the um, locking bars. So we're gonna go all the way up to the transport here, or raise to here. Once I've gotten to raise to here, I'm simply going to press and hold the down button and settle it on all four of those locking dogs in the corners. I can release the button, grab my strap. I'm going to re-strap it every time I transport it. I'm going to re-strap the flying carpet just because I want to eliminate that bounce. Remember the sign strap to transport and we have four straps and four corners that we need to do. That's the flying carpet. 